everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna take a look at building this heated 3D printer enclosure. So there are a few reasons why you might wanna build an enclosure like this. Uh, number one being that it opens up the ability to print more exotic types of filament, think nylon, polycarbonate, ABS, things like that. It'll also help with your warping and prints. If you experience warping, it's likely due to a change in temperature through the uh, print itself. So this will help keep a uniform temperature throughout the print and it'll be less prone to warping. You can also use it to heat up your lunch. Uh, so that's a plus as well. But without further delay, let's take a look at the concept. Before getting started into the build, I wanted to throw in a disclaimer. Any heat source poses a possible risk, especially when used for things other than its intended purpose. I'll only use this heated enclosure while I'm keeping an eye on it. So do this at your own risk. To start off, first things first, I started with a base box structure to build my enclosure from. I decided to make the box out of MDF board since it's more sound and heat insulating than plywood or particle board. For the exhaust port, I decided to drill a hole in the top and add a hub for an HVAC hose and a fan to connect. I'll use a 4 inch HVAC hose to run from the hub to the window. I wanted the door to attach with two hinges and have some sort of window to see through. I decided to add insulation to the inside of the box to improve heat insulation and I'll likely staple these into place. To further reduce noise, I'll add vibration absorption pads to the bottom of the enclosure. I decided to add a temperature controller to maintain constant temperature. Additionally, I'll add some weather stripping around the door frame to further improve heat insulation. For my heat source, I'll use a miniature space heater. Be aware that you should never leave a space heater running without keeping an eye on it, as they can be a fire hazard. Now with the concept out of the way, let's take some measurements of our printer so we can see what size we need to make our box. Since my printer is a bed slinger, I measure the distance from where the bed starts to where it maxes out on the other side. I use this measured dimension as the depth dimension when I build my box. Once you've got the measurements for your printer, you can go ahead and start building your box structure. I recommend building it out of MDF or plywood, but you can use whatever kind of material you want. Additionally, you want to make sure that your frame is as square as you can get it because you want the front door to be able to align perfectly and have no air gaps. If you're going to be using plywood or MDF board, I recommend drilling pilot holes to avoid splintering or damaging the panels. The best way to cut the panels for your enclosure is probably a table saw or a cabinet saw, but a circular saw will do just fine and there are many ways to cut panels. If you do end up splitting or damaging your panels, you can always use wood filler to cover that up. If you decided to add a window to your enclosure, I recommend using a jigsaw to cut out the frame. I also recommend using polycarbonate sheets. Polycarbonate is very much easier to cut than acrylic and it can be cut with a table saw or a circular saw. I've chosen to insulate the window by using two different panels of polycarbonate, one panel on the bottom and then one panel one quarter inch thick higher, which will leave an insulating layer for my door. Once you've got your box and have a pretty good idea of what you want to do for the front door, I would recommend going ahead and painting it. You may have to touch it up with some paint later with holes that we're going to cut, but painting it now will save you some trouble. So now that we've got our box painted, we can go ahead and start thinking about adding an exhaust port to our enclosure. I recommend using a four or five inch hole saw and drilling a hole at the top center of the enclosure. You can also drill a hole in either side or the back. You're also going to need some type of exhaust port for your enclosure. This is a 3D printed part. I'll leave the link in the description. You will need a fan. You can buy an inline fan. Uh, there's a lot of hose fans that you can buy off Amazon or probably find one from your local hardware store. You'll also be needing a hose and a couple of hose clamps to go to your exhaust port out your window and your exhaust port on your enclosure itself. Uh, as far as the exhaust port going out the window, I'll get into that a little bit later. For cutting the exhaust port, I used a tape measure and a marker to mark the center, then cut the hole with a four inch hole saw. For attaching the exhaust, I've got some number six machine screws. I drilled holes in the top and put the screws through both the exhaust port and the fan, then tighten them with nuts on the other side. When we're done assembling our enclosure, we can use these hose clamps to attach our hose to our exhaust port on our enclosure, as well as our exhaust port going out the window. But we're gonna save that for later. So we've got a lot of options that we can do for adding heating to our enclosure. I'm gonna go over a couple. Uh, number one would be to just add a light bulb to the enclosure, incandescent or a heat lamp, and just have it attached to where it'll face down over your print or to where it'll just shine into the enclosure uh, and add heat. Just make sure that it's inside the enclosure. Option two would be to add a space heater to it. This option is a little bit more dangerous um, and a lot of house fires are caused by space heaters throughout the United States. Uh, I'm going to be going with this option, but keep in mind that it's a little bit more dangerous and you're gonna to need to keep an eye on your printer if you're gonna go with this option. For reference, here's one of my other enclosures that has a heat lamp connected to a corded bulb socket. Since I've decided to go with a space heater, I'm gonna do a square cutout in the back to place it. 
I placed the heater where I wanted the port and marked it with a marker. I then drilled holes at the corners of the square and connected the dots with a jigsaw. Be careful where you decide to place it as you may end up having to put a metal flow director over it to avoid damaging the motors or electronics. The printer I'll be using will allow me to put all electronics on the outside, so this isn't an issue for my build. After making the port and placing the heater, I caulked the inside of the enclosure to make it more airtight. I like to use the finger trick for caulking to make it look nice, but I'm definitely not an expert. After that, I caulked around the heater to make sure it stays in place, then caulked the exhaust port hub. For the air-gapped window, I caulked one side of the window, then when it dried, flipped it over, caulked the other side of the door, then pressed that side over the window to get my quarter-inch air gap. I then went through and added insulation to each side of the box. I used a staple gun to attach the insulation to the MDF boards. When cutting the insulation, I made sure to size it slightly larger than necessary so that there would be some overlap between the sheets. I cut a gap out for the exhaust fan and the power supply and fit it over. I thought about running the fan cable behind the insulation, but decided against it in case I ever need to replace the fan. I made a cutout in one of the squares and attached insulation to the door in the same way. I then added some weather stripping along the outside of the door frame to maintain insulation integrity there. I did have trouble getting the insulation to stick, but it could have had to do with the specific insulation I used. Additionally, I could have used glue or door stripping to get a better seal. To attach the door, I secured it with bar clamps, then marked the hole pattern and the hinges onto the door itself. I attached some white metal hinges I had lying around, then clamped it back into position on the door frame to attach it to the enclosure. I used quarter inch wood screws to attach the hinges since I didn't want them sticking through the panels. As long as you've used a fairly flat surface, the door should open and close fine and should only need slight elevation. After attaching the door, I decided to use some heavy duty magnetic door catches as the latch to keep it shut. I used a sharpie to mark where to attach the magnet and used wood screws to attach them to the MDF board. I had to do some finagling to get the magnet placement just right, but after some trial and error, the door opened and closed just fine without a hitch. To help with vibration, I added some adhesive vibration absorption pads to the bottom. This was doubly useful as it gave more clearance for the door to open and close. For running cables, I used a small hole saw to cut a hole in the back and used a knife to punch a hole in the insulation. At this point, I add LED light strips to the enclosure. At first I had an idea of how I was going to strategically go through and place the lights, but at the end of the day I just threw a bunch of lights in there and called it good. I figure if I can't use it to send light signals to the International Space Station in broad daylight, then I might as well just throw it out the window. At this point, I add my HVAC hose to the port I printed at the top of the enclosure. I tighten the hose clamp enough to get a good seal, but not too much so that the port isn't damaged. After that, I take a 3D printed window hose port I printed and slide it into the window. I put some foam insulation in the open area in the window and call it good. I then add an Inkbird temperature controller to maintain a steady temperature within the enclosure. I add adhesive light hooks to help with cable routing and place the temperature probe at the top of the enclosure. Last but not least, I attach the fan controller with a command strip. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If it helped you out, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.